Section 1, 1, example 3. So we have 5 over x is greater than negative 1. So I think the temptation would be to multiply by x, but let's talk about why that's not allowed. Um, so let's just pick up two numbers for x and then see why it doesn't work. So let's say x is 10. So we have 5 over 10 is greater than negative 1. Um, let's say I want to get rid of the fraction, so I multiply both sides by 10, multiply by 10, so 5 is greater than negative 10, which is a true statement, right? 5 is bigger than negative 10. What if instead we say negative 10? So I'm just plugging in different values for x. That may or may not work. So when we have a negative, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 10. But the multiplying by a negative tells me to flip the sign, the inequality. So we end up with 5 is greater than 10. Or sorry, 5 is less than 10 because I can flip it. Which is also a true statement. And so now when I have 5 over x is greater than negative 1 and I multiply by x, now the question is, is do I flip it or not? And it's not a yes or no question. The answer is really, it depends, right? It depends if we have a negative or a positive. And so that's why we're just not going to do this, because there's too many cases. So we can't multiply by x because we don't know if it's positive or negative. And we don't want to deal with multiple cases. This zero trick is much more efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and just add one to both sides and follow the zero trick. So 5 over x plus 1 is greater than 0. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and find a common denominator. So that would be x, so x over x. And the reason I'm going to do this is it's going to allow me to factor. And so we end up with 5 plus x over x greater than 0. So we're going to solve the numerator and the denominator. So 5 plus x equals 0. That gives me negative 5 as a 0. And then x equals 0. It's just 0. So those are my two points on the number line. And then anything in the denominator, right, x can't be 0. So even if we include endpoints, 0 is not included because it's not in the domain. Right, the denominator can never be zero. So I'm going to mark that just as a reminder. So let's go ahead and find our intervals and start testing. So let's see. We have negative infinity to negative 5. We have negative 5 to 0. And we have 0 to infinity. And again, 0 has an x on it because even if we include endpoints, 0 is never in the domain from the denominator. Um, so we're going to go ahead and test. We, in this example, we want positive for greater than 0. And we won't include the endpoints. Because there's no or equal. So we're going to go ahead and plug into each factor. So we're going to plug into 5 plus x. We're going to plug into x, and then we'll combine them to figure out if the interval is positive or negative. So pick a number on each interval. If we pick different numbers, we should still get the same answer. Um, so negative infinity to negative 5. I could pick negative 6. I kind of think negative 10 is just easier. Um, negative 5 to 0. Any number in between, I like negative 1. And then 0 to infinity, I like the number 1. But your choice. Anything on the interval will work. And so we just plug in. So we're going to plug in for each interval. So 5 plus negative 10 would be a negative. Negative 10 is just negative. And so this interval becomes positive because it's a negative divided by a negative. All right, for negative 1, we get 5 minus 1. We get positive. It's 
positive four, but I don't care that it's four. I just care that it's positive. Negative one would be negative. So this interval is negative. And then our final interval, interval we get five plus one positive. We get one, which is positive. So this final interval is positive. Um, again, you can use your calculator, but we want to be efficient. So we really want to try to do this without a calculator. You will have to do this in calculus much faster. So we're practicing now so we can use it later. So we decided we want the positive intervals and no endpoints. So I'm going to pick the first and last one. No endpoints means open circles. So we'll shade from negative infinity to negative 5. And we'll shade from 0 to infinity with open circles. And I can write the solution as negative infinity to negative 5 in parentheses union 0 to infinity as my solution. So let's go ahead and try one more in this video. Example 4. x squared is less than 9. And I know we all want to take the square root. Um, but in case we don't remember, if x squared equals 9, we take the square root of both sides. Um, we'll get into this later, but the square root of x squared is actually the absolute value. This is a topic for later of 3. So the solution is really 3 and negative 3. And so with the less than, sometimes we're flipping it, sometimes we're not, right? Because sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive, And it just doesn't quite work. So we are going to avoid that and use this nice zero trick. All right, so it has the same issues. It may be positive or negative. And we don't want to deal with multiple cases. We don't want to deal with flipping it. Um, subtracting 9 and using this trick will be way more efficient. So anything that's not linear, not mx plus b, as soon as x has a power, we like to do zeros in sign charts instead. So x squared minus 9 gives me x plus 3 and x minus 3. So that would give me negative 3 and 3 on the number line. So our intervals will be negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 3, and 3 to infinity. Three intervals in this example. Um, we have a less than 0, so we're going to want negative intervals and no endpoints for less than. And we'll start testing. So we'll plug into all the factors, x plus 3, x minus 3, and then we'll combine them. If you're ever feeling confident, go ahead and pause the video and try it without me. If you ever need to rewatch something, right, you can go backwards, perks of um, videos for lectures. So let's try some numbers. Um, so for negative infinity to negative 3, anything. Um, how about negative 5? So negative 5 plus 3 is negative, right? It's negative 2. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8, so still negative. And you multiply to make a positive. A negative times a negative is positive. Um, negative 3 to 3 for the next interval. I like to choose 0 if I can. It's easy. 0 plus 3 is positive. 0 minus 3 is negative. And we get a negative interval. And for greater than 3, you could pick 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pick 8. You can pick anything. 8 plus 3, I don't know what it is, but it's positive. 8 minus 3 is positive, And we get a positive interval. So in this case, we wanted negative and no endpoints. So it'll be that middle interval of negative 3 to 3. And my solution would be any number in between negative 3 and 3. So negative 2 is a solution, uh, 0 is a solution, things like that. And we could check. So anything in that interval is a solution. So negative 2 squared is 4, and that's less than 9 because right, it's x squared less than 9. Um, 
1 squared is 1, which is less than 9. So anything in between negative 3 and 3 should make this inequality true.